Luke Thomas here at O Athletic Gym in Houston, Texas for the Bellator 149 Open Workouts. Today, the four principal fighters were here from the main and co-main event, Kimbo Slice, Dada 5000, and of course, Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock. They worked out a little, they spoke to the media. Here are some highlights. I'm gonna obliviate this dude. When they talk about MMA, he's coming to fight MMA. My definition for MMA, you know, it's not mixed martial arts. It's mass, mutilate, and annihilation. And that's what I'm gonna do to Kimbo Slice February 19th when he step inside that, he step inside that Bellator cage. He's not as strong as me. He's not as smart as me. He's damaged goods. And I'm gonna make him feel his age, 54. And then he says, after Bellator 149, I think I'm gonna fight Roy Jones Jr. I think I'm gonna give Kurt Angle a shot. Man, dude, common sense, you never put the cart before the horse. You know what I'm saying? The horse pulls the cart. You ain't getting past me this Friday. So all that is gonna go out the window. I ain't gotta say what he got, what he don't got, what he lack. We all know, we all seen his fights. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be in for a world of hurt. I didn't come this far, you know what I'm saying, to get stopped by him. He's gonna be, he's, he's gonna be another notch under my belt. Everybody that I done fought, you know what I'm saying? Even before, even, even before it started getting wrecked, you, you know, recorded, you know, I done devoured him. You know, and if nobody didn't get out of the first round of this Friday, you know what I'm saying, it's not gonna be no different. He's not gonna get out of the first round. I like training, I like doing it, you know. I get into it, I get involved, and it's just part of my the way I train. Just like fighting, I love fighting. I may come out easy, but I'm ended hard, you know. But uh, every fight is, um, I mean, it's business at the beginning, but when the fighter starts shit talking, they make it personal. So it kind of can change the, the aspect of things, you know, you know, in the, in the nature of the fight. Like with this clown here, it's, it's personal. So I'm, I'm not gonna just beat him to want to beat him. I'm gonna try to hurt him. I'm gonna try to exploit my my ability to try to break his jaw, break his ribs. I'm gonna try to break something. If I get his ankle, I'm breaking it. You know, I know I got a few seconds for the refs get in there. So I'm gonna do, go as fast as I could, strong as I can, to end this guy's career. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> He's the one that been losing sleep for the last 20 years inside of his mind. He can't understand how can somebody with all that physique and all that strength lose to somebody like me, like skinny. <laughs> what do you mean you've been talking so long? I, when I heard it wasn't Scott Coca approach me. I guess he's been bugging Scott Coca for a while. I didn't hear about that until when Scott Coca approached me. I was like, nah, come on, really? I'm out. He's like, nope. <laughs> he wants a piece of you. It's like, all right, let's do it. It's legendary. I mean, I can't say any more about it. You got two guys that helped create the sport. The first feud in MMA, the actual first guy who got a belt put around him, Hoyce Gracie, in a tournament. The first guy who ever fought in a single fight tournament and had to wore the belt, which is all coming to where it is now. These, we created and helped start the sport. And now we get to go where the fans, whenever you talk about Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock, they're always saying, well, no, Ken won that fight. Well, yeah, but that was a draw on the thing. Well, and it's always an argument. It's always an argument about whether or not I won the fight, whether it was a draw, or who's the best of all time. And guess what? We get to prove it. Actually, go in the ring. We don't have to digitalize it on some computer and say, oh, he had a left jab here. No, this is real. We get to actually walk into the ring and actually prove who the better fighter is. But this is about a legacy. This is about my legacy, and it's about his legacy. And I want to make sure that when the story is told that my legacy stands on top, not his. That's just being competitive. There's nothing against him or nothing against his family. That's just how I want it to be told. And I think that's not being selfish, that's being real. And uh, so I've trained hard for this fight, and I really want this fight. I know he's made many mentioned many times that it's just another sparring session, and it doesn't mean anything. And that's fine. Got no problem if that's the way he truly feels. I don't think so, but if it does, that's fine with me because I'll be happy enough to take that role and be the guy that says it means everything to me. This is my legacy, it's my ending, and I'm gonna tell it the way I wanna tell it. 
So there we are, workouts are over. As you can tell, there wasn't a lot of working out, but there was a lot of talking to the media. You can make what you want of these fights. It did seem like there was a little bit of a personal rivalry, at least in that co-main event. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned to MMAfighting.com because we're going to have coverage tomorrow's press conference, all the one-on-ones, and we're going to have a preview show when Sean Alshadi gets here. Lots of coverage coming your way for Bellator 149. From Houston, Texas, I'm Luke Thomas. See you guys tomorrow.